Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Magnus and today I will be showing you how to change configuration or how to change from NXOS to Cisco ACI. When you first boot up a Nexus switch, it will ask you to do uh, initial configuration and we will do this. So I will just put the temporary password here. This password we will be using for SCPing the new image file to the switch. So let's skip the basic configuration. So let's just log in here to admin and the password that we just selected. And I will be doing two switches at the same time. So I will just put in a host name here so I don't confuse the switches between each other. The next step that we will do is that we will add a default route and this we do under the VRF context management. So just IP route and then to, to the default gateway on that subnetwork. And the reason why we do it on the VRF context management is because the interface management zero is within that VRF. And here we just put in an IP address and don't forget the no shutdown. So we open interface and then exit and enable feature SCP server. Now we will go to uh, my jump gate. So we just try to ping the server or the, the Nexus switch I mean. And normally it takes a few seconds before it's activated. So here we see that we have connectivity. So here we will be sending the new image to the switch. And I'm using uh, PuTTY, but you can use whatever SCP program that you have. So here we just put in uh, that we will SCP the new image file, admin and the IP address of the, of the switch. Oh, wait. Okay, now, and you need to confirm the fingerprint and then you just put in the password that you just selected uh, when you did do the installation. And here we're transferring the file. I will fast forward a bit and you see in the top right corner, I'm actually doing two switches at once. So hold on a little bit and we will just finish this one. And now the next step is to go back to the switch, do a conf D and new no boot NX OS. And this removes the boot from the old firmware. And then we just uh, save the configuration. And this is really important to save the configuration. After the configuration is changed, we will uh, save, we will go back into conf T and we will write, wait, we will write, let's see what the file is called. So dear boot flash, so we see the file and it's the ACI N9000 file. So boot ACI boot flash and then the file name, this file name, and then just copy it there. So enter and we will select yes here. And here it's really important that you don't save. So you just reload the switch. So type reload and here reboot. So yes, it will give you a warning that the configuration is not saved, but you should not save it. And then the switch will boot. And in my case, it took a long time because it needed to do some verification. And it took almost 20 minutes. So let's go into the APIC. Within the APIC, we will check for new devices. So fabric, fabric membership, and then we see pending registration. And here we have both of our switches. And as you see, they only show serial number. So it's really important that you type down your serial number when you rack the devices, because if you have 50 switches at the same time, there's no way you will select the correct one when you if you don't type down the serial number. So here we just select the, the node ID and the, um, the name of the, of, the fab, of the new switch. So just put register here. And after you put register, it will go into a few uh, states. Let's do the second switch here as well. So register the node ID and the node ID you cannot change without uh, 
deleting it and adding it again the name you can change so but in this case I normally put the, the server farm the rack number the function and then the number the switch will go in it to a few stages and it will be removed from here and go to register node this takes a few minutes um, and after this we are going to upgrade the switches so just wait for this to to become active and they will work when they are active but we want everything on the same firmware so we will do that after so just wait here a few seconds or min minutes and you see that the switches are coming back and becoming active so when you see that they are active we will go back into admin and then we will go to firmware and here you can see an overview of all the switches that you have and the firmware that they currently have so we will create an upgrade group and normally I create an upgrade group for even and for uneven switches so you don't upgrade the same switches um, within the same rack at the same time so you have full redundancy meaning that you can do this uh, during production if you want um, so in this case I will just select that it overrides it because there is no production and I don't need to wait for an error message or so and here I just select um, every other switch in this case and just verify that we have all of them and it's the same firmware for the leaf and spine switches I just press OK and then we do submit everything looks correct so just press submit and the APIC will start to send the firmware to the switches that need to be upgraded you see here 2 is already done and that's because they have been upgraded before so let's do the second one the second group and that will be uh, opposite then so select the firmware select the devices that we want to have in this group and it should be the remaining three and just press ok verify that everything looks good and then press submit so everything looks good to me so submit and you see that uh, the upgrade it starts on the on the last member as well and two other ones has already been completed the upgrade here takes quite a lot of time as well uh, so I will fast forward it I will just see if we can get a new status at least so you can see some yeah here you see it's starting and it's moving forward the the percent bar is not so accurate but uh, in this case the upgrade will take I believe like 10 to 20 minutes yeah uh, there is no no need to rush it but just make sure to upgrade um, the switches separately so you see here now it's soon done and they are booting and here 30 minutes later in this case so it took a, a long time here you see that they are active again so everything is back up and running I hope you did enjoy this video if you did please uh, like and share the video and uh, let me know in the comment below if you want to see anything else regarding Cisco or Checkpoint or networking generally so I see you in the next one take care bye